Uh, welcome to the Make to Innovate kickoff for the fall 2016 semester. Uh, once again, I'm very happy to see this room filled. I know all of you are getting anxious to get started on your projects, get things going. And with this meeting, we're going to make some announcements. Uh, we're also going to, um, and we'll talk a little bit about M2I and a few changes that have gone through for that. Afterwards, again, there will be a meet and greet out in the atrium um, from 4.45 to 5.45. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and get started. And uh, Dr. Wellesden would like to say a few words. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to him. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the sixth year of M2I, and it's something we're really proud of. Um, good things happen by accident, and M2I was a real happy accident for it. Uh, I came here seven years ago, and I've got a position called the Vance and Arlene Kaufman Endowed Department. What that means is they donated some money to the university. I have a pot of money that I can spend on new activities. And there's a, they go through all these ceremonies. Universities love ceremony. So they had a ceremony where they give me this medal. And the Kaufmans were there. And I had to give a speech. And it was about two days before. And they told me, well, you have to come up with some new innovative thing to talk about in your speech. And I panicked. I said, what, what can I do that's new and innovative? And I had done a stint for the Defense Department at a place called DARPA. Anybody ever hear of DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency? And so I did some looking around, and the director of DARPA had just given some testimony to Congress. Her name is uh, Regina Dugan. She's now the head of Google X. And in her testimony, she had one phrase, and that phrase was, in order to innovate, you have to be able to make I thought, wow, that's really a cool statement. And furthermore, at that time, what everyone was doing in the department was writing computer code. Well, computer code's important. I, I think it's very important to know how to code. But that's all they were doing. And there was nothing that was hands-on. And so we got the idea of building a program that was hands-on where you made things to innovate. That's where and Make to Innovate came from. The reason we call it M2I is we hired a graphic artist, and he basically stole the Mission Impossible 2 logo turned it around. All these things are accidental. But I had just met Matt and another fellow. Um, and Matt and he ran something. One was called Open Lab, which isn't very inspiring. To me, an Open Lab is a door. And your organization, I forget what yours was called, SSCL, which meant Space System. Yeah, Space so Systems and Controls Lab. I could never remember the name of. And so I met with both of them. And I said, we've got this new idea called M2I, and it's going to be a big deal someday, and here's your chance to get it on the ground floor. Well, the other person quit, saying, you're destroying what I've already got. Matt embraced it, and here we are today. I mean, look at this room is packed, and, and things are happening. And so it's gotten to the point that M2I is the one thing that we're most known for in this department, the thing we're proudest of, and so you're going to be participating in that. What you probably don't know is that Boeing has decided to sponsor m 2 okay? And so uh, they're going to put money into M2I. The M2I logo is now going to have a sponsored by Boeing down in the corner. And the kickoff of the Boeing sponsorship is going to happen on November 3rd when Dennis Mullenberg, the CEO of Boeing, the highest ranking graduate of Iowa State University, is going to come to campus and announce that Boeing is going to be sponsoring him. So other than that, M2I is dead dull, not worth going. So have fun with it. Welcome to the new year. It's an exciting place to be. It's something we're very proud of. And someday you'll all get to say that you were part of him. So thank you. All right, well, thank you very much, Dr. Wilson, for all that, those good words. And again, uh, this, is, this is huge. And, and you guys really are part of a, a very big deal here um, within the department, and in my opinion, also even on campus. I mean, I think just about everyone knows now what M2I is. So with that, uh, as Dr. Wilson had just mentioned, uh, again, we are uh, 
kind of going to a new chapter in our relationship, especially with Boeing. And with that, uh, we actually have some folks from Boeing that would like to also now talk directly to you folks as well, too. So, Paul, I think, uh, are we set? There we go. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to these fine gentlemen who will tell a little bit more about M2I and Boeing and some exciting things that will be coming up for that. So, Ben, why don't you take it away? Hey, Matthew. Uh, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. Matthew, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Well, we're always reminded that at Boeing we build fantastic products and sometimes we struggle through video conferences, but today it looks like we're doing just fine. Um, my name is Ben Nimmergut and I'm the production engineering chief engineer on the 777 program and I graduated from Iowa State in mechanical engineering in 2001. My name is uh, Ryan Engel. I'm the 777 Regulatory Administration Manager here at Commercial Airplanes, and I graduated from Iowa State in 2004 with a degree in aerospace engineering. And I'm Joe Reese. I'm a configuration design engineer for the research and technology side of that company, and I graduated from Iowa State with aerospace engineering in 2011. So I just had a few comments to share, and then uh, Ryan and Joe are going to talk a little bit more about how we're looking forward to getting more engaged with all of you. Uh, I always tell people at Boeing, um, our success is founded in the technical knowledge of our employees, as well as their ability to work with others, and especially cross-functional. Um, we've had a long-standing partnership with the university, and part of that is just because the university graduates students that are not only very strong uh, engineers, but they're strong in their ability to work with others. Back when I was a student there, my last two years, I spent um, leading the solar car team. And actually, Matthew and I worked together on that solar car project back when we were students. Um, Make to Innovate is another great example where uh, all of you come together to work on technical projects and go through that discipline. Um, but the other thing that you may not be keenly aware of is going through that process, you are continue to challenge yourself and learn about working with others. And we're so excited about the Make to Innovate project because quite frankly, that's what we do every day in our, at Boeing is solving technical projects, but with other people, other people that uh, are not necessarily located in the same place as we are, um, located in other locations, but they're definitely cross-functional. Um, so we're excited to really expand our engagement with the Make to Innovate program and um, Joe and Ryan are going to talk about some uh, ideas of uh, how we're going to go forward. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Ben. So uh, I see some familiar faces in the crowd, which is great. Uh, I've been supporting uh, Matthew for the past about two and a half years. Uh, Joe and myself have been uh, participating as advisors to uh, one of the teams in uh, Make to Innovate. Uh, which has been a great experience for us, and we've uh, been able to share some, uh, hopefully, project management best practices and other items with the team as they kind of work to develop uh, their goals and where they want to go each semester. Uh, one of the things that we're really excited about with Boeing uh, stepping up is we're going to be providing additional uh, industry advisors from across Boeing. We have about 600 uh, alumni from Iowa State across our engineering groups, and so we're really looking forward to being able to um, step in and support additional teams this year. Uh, additionally, we're, uh, we just started to uh, get access to your guys' forums, so Joe and I and, and others are going to be participating in the, the Ask an Engineer forum uh, this year. Uh, Matthew will probably talk more about that a little bit later, but it will be a great opportunity for both Boeing engineers and for you guys to be able to ask questions on your projects and for us to kind of be able to provide uh, feedback to you guys real time or within a couple of days. Uh, other things that we're going to explore this year is with our uh, increase in um, advisors, we're hoping to have more people back on campus throughout the year. And we were going to explore the idea of doing roundtable discussions um, on topics related to industry or project management or other items that may be of interest to you guys. So. You know, for the last two years, I've been supporting it, and you know, I'm really excited to see it grow this year, and I uh, can't wait to see what you guys are going to do. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, echo Ben and Ryan's comments there. 
Uh, when I was at school, I took part of AIAA Design, Build, Fly, and that's definitely one of my uh, highlights of my uh, education. And so taking part of these M2I programs is really, uh, really beneficial. Uh, and I'm looking forward to continue working with you guys. Uh, like Ryan said, we have been for the past two, two and a half years. Uh, and we get just as much out of it as you guys get. So uh, looking forward to taking up with more teams. All right. Those are some thoughts from our end, and we're looking forward to uh, getting to work with uh, more students and just take, it, take advantage of uh, throwing out questions and, and help needed to engineers working in industry. Um, it'll be fun to explore and, and grow those relationships. OK. All right. Well, thank you, guys, um, for introducing yourselves and talking a little bit about that. So thank you. And also on behalf of myself and everything, again, we, we truly do support all, all the support that we've gotten from Boeing. And again, this, this is going to be a lot of good collaboration and, and will benefit you guys uh, as well as you'll, you'll learn some of these additional skills. You'll be able to network with uh, some of the Boeing engineers like Ben and Ryan and Joe that are up there. So, uh, so yeah, again, thank you very much. Uh, OK, with that. We're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about M2I. Boeing, I think, is going to kind of still stay in there, so we might have a chance for some questions towards the end. We'll kind of see uh, how we go. We do have some limited time here. Uh, and that there are a few things with the program that I want to kind of cover about, like some of the stuff that I've talked about with the website uh, as well. So just a, as we're going through some more introductions here, I just want to do a couple more introductions. Again, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Matthew Nelson. I am the program coordinator. So I help oversee everything as far as how the program is run, uh, budgeting, and also a lot with the uh, grading as well uh, happens through that. Uh, Dr. Ambar Mitra uh, is the instructor on record. Uh, Dr. Mitra and I spent most of the summer, uh, as you guys now know, we have now changed the course. We now actually have a more legitimate course number, 294 and 494. Uh, both him and I worked through that process, which is um, a fairly long process. I think it took us about three months to get through that process, and it has to be approved by uh, curriculum committees, and uh, you know a number of groups have to sign off on it. Um, so you'll notice when you sign up for that, um, both of our names are on there, but he's, he is the instructor on record, so his name shows up first uh, for that. Um, we also have Christine Nelson, who is also here. Uh, Christine will be helping uh, with some of the, yeah, you can take a bow if you want, you know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Christine will be helping um, with some of the ordering, uh, keeping me in line, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, by the way, no, there is no relation between us, by the way. Um, and we also have uh, Cameron Rayburn. Um, who, by the way, if you have not gotten the memo, is not an advisor anymore. Uh, he is now a lecturer uh, and is teaching the 160 class, but he is still going to help us with some of the academic success uh, within the program as well. No longer get to your RAN. Yes. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> ask him for his RAN. Yeah, that, you know, so. <laughs> uh, so those are some of the key people that you'll be uh, working with throughout the M2I program. Uh, if you have any questions, please come and talk to us. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have, especially as you're going through the semester. OK, so getting involved in M2I. Uh, for some of you that have been involved, a lot of this you've, you'll have seen before, uh, I, although I did trim it down. Uh, so again, for those of you that are new or wondering about what is M2I, uh, it is a, a new pro or not a new program. <laughs> Six years now we're going on to. Uh, within the aerospace engineering department, it is open to all students. Uh, so you don't have to be in the College of Engineering. We do have students I know from meteorology, psychology, uh, from some of the other uh, sciences, and of course, aerospace, computer, electrical, uh, and all those type of engineering disciplines go along with that. Our goal is to make sure that we're engaging students in hands-on projects. Uh, we want you to take what you learn in the class and be able to apply that uh, to real world type of problems that are out there. And we want you to also be engaging with faculty and staff as well, which is why you know, you're required to have a faculty advisor 
Uh, we want you to be engaged with them. We also want you to be engaged with people like Boeing, like Ben and Ryan and Joe as well, too, um, you know, and, and share that information. Again, uh, a lot of these people have years and years of experience. They can help convey some of their knowledge to you guys. Uh, that will make you a, a better engineer uh, or scientist uh, as you go out into the real world. The other thing that are, is part of our mission is to help augment your learning. So this is designed to be a, a course and a program in which you guys are also going to probably be learning new things as you go along. Uh, you're going to find out some things that sometimes what looks good on the computer screen doesn't always mean it's either easy to manufacture or easy to uh, work with in the real world. Uh, so this is to help you augment some of that learning process. Some of you also will probably be learning some skills that you may not have never thought you would ever learn. Uh, there's been a lot of people, especially some of the aerospace engineers, that start learning some stuff about electronics because they needed to do that to move their project forward. Uh, so you will probably learn a few other things as you go along here. Also project management, team building type of things is, is also things that we hope you, you get from this uh, experience within Make to Innovate. Uh, and to help design and operate, and, and of course, we're, we are in the aerospace engineering department, so uh, most of our projects, of course, are aerospace uh, type of projects, so helping to learn to design and, and work with those type of systems uh, for that. Uh, and then introducing students to concepts such as design optimizations. Uh, one of the things that you'll learn, too, with this process is that a lot of times you may start with a design and there's, it's always going to be an iterative type of process from there. So you'll design, you'll do some testing, and you'll probably do some redesign to improve based on what you learn from your testing. Not everything, for example, can be simulated. So, Okay, so getting involved with M2I, how does that work? So again, one of the biggest changes, especially for this year, is before we had the 290 and the 490 class, uh, we now have the 294X and the 494X, which I'll talk a little bit more in detail later. Uh, if you're new, especially if, if you haven't been involved in M2I before, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting yourself involved in a project. And that's part of the reason why we'll have the meet and greet after this. Uh, we'll have a lot of the existing teams that are out there. Uh, you can get to know them. They can get to know you, see if it's a good fit for you to work with those uh, particular projects. But last and, and certainly not least is you want to make sure that you're getting involved. Uh, there are a number of things that we do for grading throughout the semester, which, again, we'll cover. But if you're not being engaged, if you're not being involved, it's almost certainly to be either a greatly reduced grade or a failing grade. So you want to make sure that you're involved. And again, if at any time you feel like you're not getting involved for whatever reason, that's where you should be talking to either your faculty advisor or you can also come and talk to me. 494 and uh, 294. So uh, 294, uh, generally restricted to freshman and sophomore, uh, is one credit course for that. Uh, 494, junior and senior, uh, is the requirements for that. Most of you will sign up for two credits. If you're planning to be in a leadership position, either as project lead or as team lead, uh, then we're expecting you to sign up for three credits. So a little bit different structure before you might remember, for those of you that are involved in the past, it was a little bit more open. This actually created some confusion, especially in some teams. We had some students that were in there for only one credit, some students that were in there for five credits. So we had to narrow it down a little bit and, and put a few uh, rules in place uh, for that. Generally, this is the organization that we're expecting. Um, the project lead is what is new. Um, this was the team lead. Um, one of the biggest things that we're doing differently this semester is that we're treating the project as an overall project, but we do want to do assessments on the individual teams. And a lot of this is that last year we had some teams that were quite honestly very, very large. Um, I believe the record last year was 23 people on one team. Yeah, exactly. My reaction as well. Um, so project lead uh, would have been the person who was the team lead. Uh, their goal is to, of course, help oversee the project overall. And then 
the, the more the individual teams, if you have a team, for example, that's going to do avionics, if you're going to have a team that's going to work on mechanical, uh, then you would have a team lead for each one of those teams as well. And they're all part of that. Again, you should be working with your faculty advisor. We do encourage teams to also have technical advisors. And one of the things that Boeing is going to be helping us with that is they're going to have some more engineers uh, available that will be uh, working with some of these uh, more teams besides just the Boeing team uh, and, and, and uh, basically increase their involvement within that. And so technical advisors are strongly encouraged for teams. For some of you, you've already had a technical advisors. A couple of teams, uh, uh, Sci for example, comes to mind. I know you guys have already had one. Uh, now we're, we're really encouraging that you have that. And these are people that are, are in industry uh, that can bring, again, that other expertise to the table for you. Uh, and then, of course, myself with the program coordinator. So, so that's kind of the, the chart of how things uh, work organizational. As far as how things are basically kind of broken down, so the project, as far as the assignments that we'll do for the project itself, uh, we'll have a few things that will be done. Um, as we've done in previous years, we'll have the team, or I'm sorry, the project charter. Um, all the teams will have also a project website. Uh, and we will, of course, continue to do the design review and poster presentation. So that'll be done at the project level. Uh, for the teams, uh, we, want, we want to see weekly reports from the individual teams. So again, for the larger teams that we have out there, um, it means I'm going to have more to grade, but I think it will be a fairer assessment uh, to you guys as far as having that. Same thing with the milestones as well. So each team will have their own set of milestones. And as we've had in the past, we'll, of course, have some individual assessment as well. And that's the cross-evaluations that we do twi twice a semester. Of course, we do the attendance records. Uh, and don't freak out about the final exam. Um, because we are now more of a course, we're going to have something for that. Um, it won't be like, I'm going to expect you guys to do calculus or something like that. But uh, uh, there will be a quote unquote exam at the end of the semester for that. So. And I know you guys will probably have some questions. I'm going to try to get through most of my slides, and then you know, I'll take any questions that you guys have. So uh, We've got a couple dates I want to make sure I announce now um, and kind of reiterate to you guys uh, that are coming up. Uh, the first thing is the uh, first draft of the project charter. Uh, that is next week, September 2nd. Uh, for those of you that are signed up already in the class, you should be added to Blackboard. That charter assignment, or not the assignment, the charter document is up in Blackboard um, right now. Uh, we will then be returning these charters to you guys by September 9th with any kind of feedback uh, so that you guys have an opportunity to uh, make some edits. And then we'll do the final signed like we did last year, where you took them to your faculty advisor and had make sure they understood it, uh, and then signed off on that, and you'll just turn that into my office uh, by September 16th. Um, we're also going to start the first weekly report on um, September 9th will be the due date. So same thing as last year, uh, Friday, 5 PM for that. Uh, overall grading and some additional due dates that we have that are coming up. So I mentioned already the charter, uh, the milestone. A lot of these percentages are the same. There's only a few minor things that got changed with it. Um, attendance and cross evals are, are kind of um, lumped together into 10% um, of your grade. Midterm design review and the presentation, poster expo. Uh, you still have the 25% that also comes from your advisor. So keep that in mind. This is why it's important to work with your advisor. Because we will ask your faculty advisor, how did the team do? Did they meet with you on a regular basis? You know, uh, go from there. Um, website, which I'll talk a little bit more later, uh, September 30th. And, and of course, finals week, we'll, we'll do the final exam uh, as far as that goes. So that's sort of the breakdown. Uh, this is in the syllabus, by the way. So this, a lot of this information is in the syllabus which again is, is now been posted to Blackboard as well.
Uh, just a few other kind of requirements. Again, most of you probably already know this, but uh, keep in mind, especially when we start going into uh, working in the lab, there are a few requirements that we have for that. Everyone needs to have the following training done. EHS shop safety, EHS PPP, which is uh, personal protective equipment, EHS fire safety, and then there's a general lab safety that's on uh, the blackboard. Okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, if you already took these, if you're coming in from last year, log into EHS's website, check the expiration date. I believe some of those are only good for one year. I think is one of them only for two years? I'm trying to remember. OK, fine. Are there all three? OK, so you should be. So again, just double check the, the uh, expiration uh, on those. Uh, the general lab safety has been reset, so everyone does need to do that again uh, for this year. Um, and again, keep in mind that the, the part of the lab monitors and technicians' jobs is to enforce these. So they will be checking. Uh, usually, we start that about the third or fourth week in, into the class that we say you need to have these done before you can be in the lab. So, For those of you that don't know what the process is, it is pretty easy. Um, for the EHS uh, training, uh, you can go to EHS website. And you can click on training. You will log in with your ISU login. And then you can just search for those trainings. And they should pop up right away. And again, you can also go and pull in whatever trainings you have done as well. And it will it'll pull up the certificate. So if you need to re-download the certificate, you want to check the expiration, all that stuff is managed through EHNS's website. Uh, when you're done, you can go ahead and print out your certificate. Uh, and then we'll keep them for our records. So. Um, lab hours, these are tentative right now. Um, we're, we're, uh, the lab is not open this week. Uh, we, we always keep it closed this first week of, of classes. I'm in the process. Um, I've already interviewed and I've already hired a few uh, lab techs and lab monitors. I'm hoping to have that finished um, towards the end of this week and meeting with the lab monitors. Uh, the lab itself has gone through some changes. I will forewarn you now. Um, I'm an engineer. I love to change things. So, um, <laughs> uh, and uh, so we have done some rearrangements, which we hope will, will make it a little bit easier for people to use the lab space, especially with the tables. Right now, we are planning to keep the same schedule that we had in previous semesters. That schedule seems to work pretty well for everyone. And that is the 2 to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 2 to 6 p.m. on Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, and 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Again, these may change. I'll have to see when I get the final schedules from all the lab monitors um, if we'll be able to keep those hours or if we need to tweak those a little bit. As soon as those are set, by the way, I will send out an announcement saying, OK, yep, these are the, the final hours that we'll have for the semester. Website. So we have a new website. It is now m2i.roe.iasate.edu. And with this new website, one of the reasons why we moved to this new um, domain system was now it was going to be possible for us to give each team their own website that will be hosted underneath there. So your team will be, for example, m2i.roe.iaca.edu slash habit slash sysat slash cardinal flight. So um, I'm in the process of getting those set up. There are a few that are already set up now. I'm going to get the rest of those finished uh, this week. Once we have all the team or the project charters, um, you know, I will be able to give the team leads administrative rights, and then the, you guys can go in there and maintain and update uh, those websites um, that you have. Um, this will be, of course, done at the, at the project level. We also now have a SharePoint site. We have now moved a lot of our uh, forms to SharePoint. So uh, ordering is now an online process. Um, requesting um, space, requesting uh, a vendor to be added, uh, all those are now put onto SharePoint. Uh, 
Uh, again, once we get through this week and I get the final numbers and the final roster for the classes, this is why it's important that you sign up for the class as soon as possible, uh, then I can go ahead and get everyone access to, the, to that SharePoint site as well. So that will hopefully help streamline things. Things like the purchasing, by the way, um, that actually goes through SharePoint and actually goes through an approval method. So you'll actually get emails back saying, you know, this has been approved, or if there was a reason why we had to reject something, then you'll get that feedback um, to you right away. So again, uh, a number of things that we've done to help based on your guys' feedback to hopefully streamline and improve some things with, with some of the processes going on with the program. The final thing with also the M2I website that uh, Ben, Ryan, and Joe had mentioned with Boeing is there's now a forum uh, on the website as well too. And this is again to help you guys um, be able to communicate on maybe more of a casual basis um, with engineers like from Boeing there. Uh, and so if you go to the M2I website, uh, you should be able to access this. Now, if, if you have any problems with that, please let me know and I'll work with uh, the College of Engineering IT Services. They've been very responsive and very helpful in getting helping me get this all set up. Uh, but this way, again, hopefully you guys can, you can post questions. It could be about a project. It could be about, hey, I'm thinking about doing an internship or a co-op. Uh, and they'll be more than happy to help give you guys some feedback uh, through that forum. So uh, there's a couple of new things on that website. The other thing with the website, it's not nearly as outdated as the old one is. We're, we, we're getting all the projects in there up to date. There is also now more accurate information about how to join M2I. There's an FAQ up there uh, about M2I. So again, this was one of the main things over the summer that we worked on to help improve, get that communication out to you guys. Uh, just a couple things with grading. Um, again, we will continue to use Blackboard. Uh, so there will be some assignments that will be done. Uh, things like the weekly reports and milestones will continue to be done through Blackboard. Um, uh, again, just like before, we'll, once we get all the chargers, we'll make sure all the, the groups and everything are up to date, and then you guys can make sure that you sign up uh, for that. Uh, I will continue to use Blackboard to post announcements as I've done in previous semesters. Uh, I mentioned the files and forms are now being shifted over to SharePoint. Um, and it, of course, you can always check to see where your grade is. And one of the things I'll mention with that is, again, if you think there's something wrong with a grade, um, please, please, please come and visit with me you know, sooner rather than later, because it'll be a lot easier for me to address issues. And this goes for any other kind of issue going on, either within your team or within the project, um, you know, either halfway or, or as soon as possible than at the very end of the semester, because usually at the end of the semester, there's not a whole lot I can do from there. Uh, again, for those of you that are new that don't know this, if you don't get signed up for your team group, um, that's a guaranteed F. Uh, if you don't see the team or the group in Blackboard, again, let me know. Uh, we'll, we'll get that fixed. Uh, and again, just reminding everyone to get themselves added once we get the process going with that. Uh, excused and unexcused absences. Um, this was something that had a little bit of confusion, so I just want to make sure I go over this again. Um, uh, you do need to make sure that you're notifying both your, your project lead, team lead, um, actually your team lead, you should notify them. Uh, and then also, I need to have a notification as well, because uh, I have to verify and I need to have you know, what the reason for that. Uh, we do use the faculty handbook as our guide for what counts as excused, as unexcused. Uh, typically, if you're doing something else for the university, uh, you've got another class, you've got band, you know, something like that. It's generally an excused absence. Um, if you're just going to go out and party, yeah, no, sorry, that's an unexcused <laughs> uh, absence. Um, yeah, Pokemon Go doesn't count. I don't care if you have to catch them all. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, if there is an emergency, you have a family emergency, you have a medical emergency that, that comes up, just please let us know as soon as you're able. Um, you know, uh, generally we want to know if, if it's something that's being planned, you know, 24 hours or more in advance. 
Obviously, if, if it's an emergency, just please let us know as soon as possible so that we can take the right corrective action from there. Um, so I talked about that. Uh, and then, yeah, there's no points lost, of course, for excused. And as we've done for the past, unexcused will be 10 points taken off of your um, attendance score. Again, advisor grade, 250 points, 25%. So I'm just trying to drive that home again. Make sure you're meeting with your advisor. Um, should be every other week minimum for that. So. And last and not, but not least, of course, we'll have all the various teams uh, as soon as we get done here in probably the next five minutes or so. Uh, we'll have refreshments out there. Uh, I'll be out there. Uh, I will take some questions now. If you have any, otherwise you can always come and talk to me later. So questions? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I should have known. <laughs> um, so we have, we have lemonade, uh, Chex Mix, ah, high V Chex Mix. I spared no expense. Um, <laughs> and uh, some pretzels as well, because we know some people have some peanut allergies. So we, we want to be sensitive to that. So yes, any other questions? Yeah, Jake. So the question was, um, uh, I'm a junior senior. I should be in 494, but I cannot fit two credits into my schedule. Can I take it for one? Right now, the class isn't set up for that. I'm actually going to check with Mitra, I believe we can have you to sign up for the 294 for the one credit. Um, now, if you need that for a technical elective, I don't think we'll be able to do anything. Yeah. OK. So what, what Cameron is saying, too, is what you might need to do. We might need to see if we can get you like a, a, your credit limit raised or something like that. So good question. Any other questions? We've got. A few more minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Cameron. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any questions for Boeing? I think Boeing is still online too. Is that right? Yeah. Do you guys have any questions for, for Ben or Ryan or Joe? Who, who, which, oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if I want to sign up for M2I, so I could uh, uh, contact with my advisor or? Oh, uh, what, what year are you? Freshman. Freshman? OK. So um, yeah, you, you should always talk to your academic advisor just to make sure that this does fit uh, within your plan. So it's always good to talk to your academic advisor but you, you are free to sign up for the course if you want to. Uh, so if, in your case, it would be the 294, 294X. So. Any other questions either for me or for Boeing or Christine or even Cameron besides the RAND number? <laughs> Dylan. OK, so the question was, and it was a very good question. The question was, if I want to ask a more specific question in the forum, such as pertaining to propulsion or something, is there a way to filter that in the forum? Um, currently, right now, there is not. However, what I would be more than happy to do, we could probably set up some subtopics within the forum. And that way, we could say, here's uh, subtopics about electronics, propulsion, mechanical, you know, stuff like that. So um, I, can, I, I can work with these guys and also with uh, our IT people, and we can probably get that set up. So good, good question. Yeah. So when you, do, when, we, when you do get into the class and when we get everything settled with the charter and everything, um, when you do that, what you do is you log into Blackboard, 
And Make to Innovate will actually show up as an organization. So normally in Blackboard, you have your classes towards the top. Make to Innovate will usually show up below. So it won't show up as arrow E294 or 494X. Um, when you click on Make to Innovate, on the left-hand side, it'll actually say groups, and it'll list all of the, basically, the, the projects and the teams in there. And then you can click on there, and then there should be some instructions to easily add yourself to that. So, yeah, good question. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, good question, excellent question. The question was, if I can't fit this into the fall semester, can I still take it in the spring semester? And yes, you can. Um, most of the teams, I know you guys are kind of set up that they will go from uh, fall to spring, especially a lot of our competition teams. So sometimes joining some of those teams halfway through can be a little bit challenging, but generally, yes, it's, it's fine to do that. So. Yeah, Dylan. Boeing? <laughs> sure. The question was, uh, are you guys planning to participate in the design review? The midterm design review? Yes. Uh, yes, we are, at, at least by BTC, potentially in person. OK. There you go. OK. Yes? Ah, very good question. Is there a person, uh, member limit, basically, on the size of the teams? Uh, yes, eight is, is what we're shooting for for that. So. Yes? That is the upper limit, eight. But for the project, for the team, right, not for the whole project. Yes. <laughs> So, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, we got a question from Tommy here. Yeah. Uh, in theory, you can have as many as you need, but um, I would, I'm expecting most will probably be between three to five, you know, for that. Right. Yeah, right, right. Each team will have the three this semester. But the project won't. It will just be within the teams, right? Yeah, within the weekly reports, right. Because we, we expect everyone will be divvied out from there. Yep. OK. Yeah. Um, Say that again. Well, when, when can I maybe pass? Chance to register for 294? Yeah. You can do that now. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is available. So 294 and 494 are through Access Plus, and you do not need a reference number anymore. So did that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Right, right. So the, the project, and, and probably, um, that's why I did the little Venn diagram. So um, again, so the teams have those, the weekly reports and the milestones that they'll be responsible for. Really what will be graded on the project level will be charter, the website, the design review, and the poster presentation. That will be evaluated at the, at the project level for that. So. <laughs> Brad, go ahead. Um, I will put out a rubric for that, but what I'm looking for mainly is we just want to make sure that you guys are at least putting some basic information about the team, so the who, what, why, and where um, type of questions. And uh, it would be nice that you guys also probably have at least some updates on how things are progressing from your team. I don't, I'm not expecting like a full-blown milestone chart or a Gantt chart or anything like that, but you're more than welcome to put that up there. I know for like things with you guys, I know you have some requirements from NASA as well too, so. 
If I want to make up a team, so should I submit the member list before September 3rd? Yes, yes. You want, so the question was, you know, if I want to join a team, you know, should I talk to that team beforehand, I mean, before um, September? Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely want to make sure you, and, and again, we'll, we'll probably break here in about a minute uh, to, so you have a chance to talk to those teams. Just through the blackboard is fine. Yep. Dylan. Um, not, yeah, not, I, I don't have a mechanism right now. There, i tell you what, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. Uh, I will work with Boeing and I'll see, we might be able to do like either a Cybox folder or something like that, that we can give them access to so we could also share some files as well too. That's a good point though, so. Okay, if there's no other questions, we're kind of over time. I want to make sure you guys have time to meet out in the atrium. Thank you all so much. Please thank Boeing as well, too. And, and thanks again, everyone. <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys. Thanks again.